Have you ever walked into a room, stopped mid-step, and thought, wait, something feels off? No noise, no smell, just this buzzing tension in the air. Now imagine that sensation turning into a sound, a physical, high-pitched tone every time someone turns on the Wi-Fi, or plugs in a charger, or maybe opens a laptop. That's what some people claim to experience. And, while it sounds completely absurd, it might not be. They say they can hear Wi-Fi. No, seriously. Not as a metaphor, as in actual sound. And they're not talking about your average phone beep. They describe a sharp electrical hiss, a pressure in the ears, a tone that pulses in sync with the signal. Some say it feels like tinnitus. Others compare it to having a mosquito trapped inside your skull. It's easy to laugh this off, until you realize there's an entire body of research behind it, and that this isn't a new idea. Back in the 1960s, US military scientists discovered something called the microwave auditory phenomenon. Basically, under certain conditions, humans can hear electromagnetic radiation. When you expose the human body, specifically the head, to pulsed microwave frequencies, something strange happens. Subjects report hearing clicking, buzzing, or knocking sounds. Not through their ears, but inside their skull. No external speaker, no actual sound waves, just pure microwave-triggered auditory sensations. The theory? These pulses cause minuscule thermal expansion in brain tissue, which creates pressure waves, and those waves travel directly to the auditory cortex. The effect was so reproducible, it was named after the man who studied it, Alan H. Fry. Now you might be thinking, okay, that's in a lab, that's radar stuff, not home Wi-Fi. But here's where things get interesting. Modern wireless tech, routers, Bluetooth, 5G, even smartwatches emit low-level microwave radiation, far below the levels considered harmful but still active. And for a small percentage of people, those emissions might be enough to trigger symptoms. This brings us to a condition known as electromagnetic hypersensitivity, or EHS. People with EHS report a wide range of symptoms, headaches, fatigue, dizziness, skin tingling, insomnia, and yes, auditory phenomena. They say their symptoms spike around routers, cell towers, fluorescent lighting, even induction stoves. And while science hasn't fully confirmed EHS as a diagnosable medical condition, it has acknowledged the symptoms are real, even if the cause is still debated. One theory is the nocebo effect. That's when your body responds to something because you believe it's harmful, even if it technically isn't. But other researchers argue we may simply not have the right tools to measure what's going on. Not that long ago, doctors dismissed migraines as female hysteria. They thought ulcers were caused by stress, until a guy named Barry Marshall literally drank a glass of bacteria and proved them wrong. Maybe electromagnetic sensitivity is just ahead of the curve. Let's go back to that sound. If Wi-Fi can't be heard by most people, what exactly are the sensitive few perceiving? One possibility? They're not hearing Wi-Fi itself, they're hearing what it does to their body. Just like some people can hear their own heartbeat in quiet rooms, or experience visual snow on a perfectly clear day. Their nervous systems are tuned differently, more sensitive, especially in the case of tinnitus, that constant ringing or buzzing in the ears. In fact, studies have shown that tinnitus patients often have hyperactivity in their auditory cortex, and some of them report their tinnitus spikes around Wi-Fi signals, phones, or chargers. Coincidence? Maybe. But when the same pattern repeats across dozens of anecdotal reports, it's worth digging deeper. There's also the matter of temporal resolution. How fast your brain can process tiny differences in time. Some people can detect time shifts in sound at microsecond levels. And if Wi-Fi pulses are occurring at certain frequencies, it's not impossible that a sensitive auditory system could register something unusual. Still not convinced? Let's look at a study conducted in Sweden in the early 2000s. Researchers found that people who reported EHS symptoms showed elevated activity in regions of the brain linked to pain and sensory integration, even during placebo tests, meaning their brains believed something was happening and responded accordingly. It wasn't in their imagination, it was in their neurology. Even stranger, another experiment exposed EHS participants to both real and fake EMF sources. And in some cases, 
their bodies reacted more strongly to the placebo. Which raises a fascinating question. If your body reacts to an imaginary threat, does that make the response less real? Pain is pain, after all. Whether it comes from a broken bone or a belief. And here's where the science starts to blur with psychology. Because if enough people experience the same strange symptom, we don't call it a delusion, we call it a pattern, a mystery worth solving. Some neurologists believe that developing brains, particularly in adolescence, may be more sensitive to environmental signals. Teenage brains are still refining how they process sensory input, which could explain why so many Gen Z and Gen Alpha kids describe overstimulation, EMF sensitivity, and vibes in a space without knowing the source. It's not magic, it's neuroplasticity in action. Every brain has something called a sensory gating mechanism. It's like a mental filter. It helps your brain ignore unimportant input, like the feeling of your socks or the hum of a light bulb. But for some people, especially those with anxiety, ADHD, or autism, this filter doesn't block as much. So they do notice the buzzing, the flicker, the microwave tone. This is measurable. EEG scans show that people with low sensory gating have a stronger P50 brainwave, a type of neural spike that fires when something sensory enters the system. In sensitive individuals, this spike is louder and longer, which could mean that background signals, even ones we don't consciously hear, are harder to ignore. And then there's cross-modal perception. That's when senses start to blend, like hearing colors or tasting shapes. It's rare, but real. So what if some people are hearing electromagnetic energy? Not as literal sound, but as a blend of sensation and signal? Add to that the effect of anxiety amplifiers. When the brain's alarm system becomes hypersensitive and flags subtle environmental signals as threats, even without fear, the brain starts scanning harder, listening closer, and it just might find something. There's even evidence that astrocytes Brain cells that aren't neurons, but support the whole system, react to EMF signals with altered calcium flow. This doesn't hurt you, but it does prove your brain knows the signal is there. So maybe it's not a question of can we hear Wi-Fi, but rather how many parts of the brain are listening at once. There's even a theory that some people can pick up on the electromagnetic pulse modulation of nearby devices. Not as language, but as pattern like a sixth sense for invisible rhythms. That's not science fiction, it's fringe neuroscience. But fringe doesn't mean false. Fringe just means we haven't built the instrument to prove it yet. Some companies are already trying to design around it. They're building low EMF routers, smartphones with adaptive frequency shifting, homes with signal shielding for sensitive residents. On the flip side, there's research into using Wi-Fi for health diagnostics, detecting breathing, heart rate, even emotional states, all by measuring how signals bounce off your body. So maybe, just maybe, the line between you're imagining it and it's already real is thinner than we think. If you're someone who's ever said, I can feel the Wi-Fi, or I get a weird buzz in my head when the microwave is on, or maybe I can tell when someone turns on their hotspot, even with my eyes closed, you're not alone. You're not broken and you're not crazy. You might just be tuned into something the rest of us are still learning how to hear. So web weavers, what do you think? Is the future full of invisible tech that's messing with our senses? Or are we just evolving into a species that can finally perceive it? Drop your thoughts in the comments. And next time your ears ring for no reason, maybe ask yourself, was that just tinnitus? Or did your nervous system just pick up a ping? Catch you next time, digital explorers. Bye-bye.